All right, so today we are going to talk about some word problems using the Pythagorean theorem. And this is actually where the Pythagorean theorem is useful. Like, it's actually a real thing that you can use in real life. So here's some examples. Some of them might be kind of cheesy, but here's some examples. Um, before we get into this, I want us to think about it. Do y'all remember what kind of triangle it has to be for it to be the Pythagorean theorem to use? It's got to be a right triangle. So when you're doing this, when you're trying to draw a diagram, because that's the hardest part, is figuring out the diagram. Keep in mind, there's got to be a right angle in there somewhere, okay? If you draw a triangle and it looks like this, there's no right angle in there, something ain't right, okay? So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind when you're trying to figure this out. All right, so we're going to work through these together and see what we can figure out. Um, so Travis and Jay jogged five miles north and then turned and jogged another 12 miles east. They decided to go straight back to their starting point, even if they have to cut through some backyards. And how many miles would the shortcut be? So first thing is, do we know our directions? North, south, east, and west? Yeah, so like on paper, obviously it's north, south, and then west and east because they spell out we, right? So on paper, that's what we're going to use because this is what we need to do a diagram. So um, to go north, that would mean straight up. So let's say they start here. This is our starting point. And they go five miles north. I'm going to go ahead and put my five in there. And then they turn and go 12 miles east. So east on paper would be this direction. So we go up and then we go straight over 12 miles east. And this is where they stop. So the question is, if they go straight back to their starting point, meaning don't go the long way, go straight back, um, how many miles would this shortcut be? So this is the shortcut. This is our starting point. This is where they stopped. If we went straight back, how long would that be? So can you see the right triangle in this? Where would the right angle be? Up here, right? Because if you go north and then east, you're turning exactly 90 degrees, basically. So there's my right angle, and that's important. Why do we need the right angle? Because that tells us where my hypotenuse is, right? So let me just draw this over here or write this formula. By the way, you'll have to have this formula memorized for the test, but most of us probably already have it memorized. So on this diagram, which one is my C? With the question mark, right? That's what we're trying to figure out. So that means the other two numbers are A and B. And does it matter which one is which? It doesn't matter, does it? So I'm going to do A for 5 and B for 12. So we're going to plug in our numbers. This is the part that I know you guys know how to do. The drawing the diagram is the hardest part, okay? So let's pl plug it in. 5 for A, 12 for B, and C. I'm going to leave as C. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay, what do I do here? What do I do next? Okay, so we need to know what both of these are. 5 squared or 5 times 5 is 25. And then 12 times 12 is 144. And then what? Add them together, which is what it's saying doing. It's saying to, I just brought down my plus sign. 25 plus 144 is... 169, I think. And then what's the last step? Square root. Square root. There we go. And by the way, if this was 5 miles and 12 miles, then my answer is 13 miles. So think about that shortcut. If I went straight back 13, is that shorter than going back 12 and then another 5? 12 and then another 5 would be 17. So yeah, my shortcut saved me a little time. Questions? The hardest part is figuring out your diagram. Okay, so try to visualize your diagram each time. On the test that we're going to take on Thursday, there's going to be a couple word problems on it, and I imagine they're going to be very similar to these ones right here. All right, number two. The bottom of a 17-foot ladder is placed on level ground 8 foot from the side of a house and then is leaned against the house. Find the vertical height at which the top of the ladder touches the side of the house. So first question is, what does vertical height mean? What does vertical mean? No? 
No. Vertical means up and down. Okay, so if they're asking for the vertical height, that literally just means the height. <laughs> we know what height means. Height means from top to bottom. So that's all that means. We're going to be looking for straight up and down. So now I want you to visualize a ladder leaning against a house. Okay, you see it? That's pretty easy. That's what we're going to draw here. So I'm going to put my house um, here. There's my house. That's the side of my house. Okay, and then here's my ladder leaned against it. That's my ladder. And then this down here would just be the ground, right? Okay, so it's on the ground. Now think about this. If this is my house over here, houses are usually built straight up and down, right? So we would say it is forming a 90 degree angle with the ground. If it's leaning at all, the house will probably fall, right? So there's my right angle. That makes sense? All right, so now we need to fill in the rest of our numbers. It is a 17-foot ladder. So which one of these segments is my ladder? The one that's leaning, right? That's my ladder. So that's 17 feet. And it is placed on the ground 8 feet from the side of the house. So meaning, here's where the ladder touches the ground from here to here. That's 8 feet. And again, we were asked to find the vertical height. That just means straight up and down. That would be this right here. We want to know if we lean this ladder up against the house, how high up is it going to reach, basically. That's what we're trying to figure out. Okay, so now when we look at this problem, we need to figure out which one of those numbers is C. Got to be 17 because it's across from the right angle. So that means my question mark and my 8 are going to be A and B. Which one do you want to be A? The house. The house. Alright, so that's A. This one's going to be B. And then now we're just going to fill that stuff in. We don't know A, so I'm going to leave it as A squared. B is 8, so 8 squared. And then C is 17, so 17 squared. Again, I know you guys know how to do this. It's that diagram that I'm worried about. So what do we do here? Okay, so we need to find out what both of these are. So 8 squared is what? 64. And 17 squared? Really? Did you know that one or did you already do it? Okay, I'm going to bring this stuff down. Now what? Can you add these? You subtract. Since you can't add these together, you instead subtract the 64. That gets rid of it. Okay, I brought down my A squared. Let's see, 289 minus 64 is 225. And what's always my last step? Square root it. And that should give us what? 15 feet. Since 17 was in was 17 foot ladder, 8 foot feet from the house. This is 15 feet. Questions? Okay, let's do the ones on the back. To get from the truck to the deer stand, you must take a trail that goes around a pond. The trail goes 34 meters south and then 41 meters east. If you could just go straight through the pond, how many meters would it be? Again, the hardest part is the diagram. So think, we need a right triangle. That's what we're talking about these last few days, right triangle. I'm going to start with my trail. The trail goes 34 meters south. So it's let's say it starts here, and then it goes, we know south is down, 34 meters south. And then from here, it goes 41 meters east. East is this direction. And the whole purpose of this trail is because it goes around this little pond, right? That's my pond. Okay, does that make sense? So here's the where we start, which would be the truck. Here's my deer stand. And then my trail, again, 34 meters south, 41 meters east. The question is, if you could just go straight through the pond, so instead go this way, how long would that be? So can you see where the right angle is? It would be this, right? Because you went south and then east, that's 90 degrees there. Okay, so we want to find 
that length right there, which one is my C? Yeah, through the pond, right? The question mark. So this is my C that makes these A and B. I'm going to give you guys a minute to finish solving this one by yourself. I know you know how to do this part. All right, let's start going over this one. So in my formula, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We're using 34 for A, 41 for B, and C is what we are looking for. So it's going to stay a C. All right, you can do these one step at a time, or you can just do them all together. doesn't matter to me. 34 squared is 1156. 41 squared is 1681, and then we add those together, right? That gives me 2,837, and what's my last step? Always square root, and I think this one gives us a decimal. It does, that's okay. It didn't tell us where to round, so let's just do two decimal places. So what should the 6 do, stay or go up? It should stay, because what's after the 6? A 3. So this is approximately 53.26, what units were they? Meters. If only we could go through the pond. Okay. Good. Question? Exactly. That's a good. That's a good point. C is always bigger than the other one. So is 53 bigger than 41 yeah. and 34? Yeah. So we probably did it right. That was I, good thinking. I forgot about that. All right. Last one here. A computer monitor is listed as being 19 inches, and this distance is actually the diagonal distance across the screen from one corner to the opposite corner. I'm going to stop right there. Do y'all know what diagonal means? That means slanted, right? So diagonal would mean like from here to here. Okay, now did you know that TVs, when they say you have a 48 inch TV or a 52 inch TV, that's talking about diagonally. It's not actually 52 inches this way, it's diagonally. For some reason that's how they measure TVs and apparently how they measure computer monitors. So if they say it's a 19 inch computer monitor, they're talking about diagonally it is 19 inches across. It says if the screen measures 10 inches in height, what's the actual width. So first of all, what shape is a computer monitor going to be? Square or rectangular, right? So I'm going to start with that. There's my computer monitor. And then I'm going to try to fill in some information. First of all, 19 inches is the diagonal distance. So I'm going to fill in a line right here. That's what they measure. That length right there is 19 inches from top corner to the other bottom corner. And it says the screen measures 10 inches in height. So height means what? Up and, down. up and down. So that means this, up and down, is 10 inches. And the question is, what's the width? Well, this right here is the only other thing I don't know, right? So that's what we're trying to figure out. And think about this real quickly. Do I need, I don't need this side over here because I already know how long it is. How long is it? 10. And then this one up here, I'll figure it out when I figure this one out. Can you picture where the right angle goes? Bottom right here. So you really don't even need this part of the diagram, the, the top side and that other side. Here's what you need right here. There's a right triangle. So question, which side is C? 19. And that would make 10 and the question mark be A and B. So I'm going to give you a minute here to finish this one. Okay, let's go over this one really fast. Um, did most of you probably use 10 for A? Okay, so A and B. Doesn't matter. Um, my formula, 10 is A, B I'm going to leave is B, and C is 19. So, what's 10 squared? 100. I'm going to bring this down. What's 19 squared? Okay, what next? Okay, good. Since you can't add these together, he's right. We're going to instead subtract this one. Over here, that gets rid of that. Bring this down. What's 361 minus 100? 261. Last step. Always square root last. Let's see what that gives up. Oh gosh, what have I done? 
261, another decimal. Again, let's just do the second one. So what should this 5 do, stay or go up? Go up to a 6 because that's a 5. So it's approximately 16.16 inches. And let's do his, his check real quick. If this is 16, is 19 bigger than 16? Is 19 bigger than 10? Okay, so it could, it could be 16. That makes sense. Okay, so for the assignment that you guys are going to do, it's, it's just two problems. And real quickly, if you look at the second one, it's a computer monitor. No, it's a TV. So it's going to be a whole lot like the, commuter, the computer problems that we just did. That one should be pretty easy. Let's look at the baseball one because this one's somewhat confusing. On a baseball field, the bases form a square. So here's my drawing. I can use this drawing or I can draw my own. But this is a square. The distance between home and first is 90 feet. Now, something that I didn't think to put on here, but I changed it for the virtual kids. If this distance is 90 feet, so is this one between first and second because it's a square. So this is also 90 from second to third, and this is 90. So I'm going to draw me another diagram over here because I don't really like that one. So here's my bases. There we are. From home to first is how far? 90 feet. From first to second is how far? Also 90 feet. Now, the question is, if the catcher has to throw it from home to second, that's what we're trying to figure out. Now, where is my right angle at? Each base is a right angle, okay? So right here, this is my right angle. So that should help you know which one is your C. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm going to leave you guys to do this one. Again, this TV one is pretty much just like number four that we just did on our examples. This one, you can use the TV or you can draw your own one if you want.